This is the worst drought to hit South Africa since 1982. The National Weather Service has called this a once in a thousand year storm. Washington state is having its worst fire season ever. The city is now facing an unprecedented flood event. This one, they're saying, is the worst one yet. Just going by the dire predictions of weather reporters, it seems as if a once in a thousand year storm is happening every single year. Multi-year droughts have ravaged reservoir supplies and agriculture in western United States and southern and eastern African countries like Ethiopia, Kenya, Somalia, and Malawi. Wildfires tear apart Indonesian rainforests and Oregon coastal forests. And on top of it all, the size of typhoons and hurricanes are getting bigger in the last 15 years. When all of these weather events are compiled together, it's not hard to see that weather is getting more extreme. But is the rise in extreme weather caused by a changing climate? Well, yes, but often when people ask that question, they are trying to tie one specific weather event to climate change, which can be a bit more difficult to answer as Professor Marshall Shepard admits. I'm very uncomfortable talking about causation of one particular storm in the same way that I can't identify what particular home run was hit uh, by a baseball player because of steroid use. I think that we know that steroid use likely increases the probability or chance that there will be more home runs in baseball, but can I conclusively say that that particular player hit that particular home run because of steroid use? I don't, I don't know that for a fact. So although it's hard to tie a straight line between climate change and the destruction caused by a recent hurricane, that doesn't mean that the trend of more extreme weather events isn't caused by a warming earth. Let's look at the increase in heavy rainfall in the United States as an example. Because of increased emissions of global greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide and methane, global temperatures have risen sharply over the last 50 years, which means warmer air. And warmer air can hold more water vapor than cooler air. So as storms ramp up and get ready to release water vapor in the form of rain, they have more to draw upon, leading to more and heavier rainfalls in an average storm. In addition to this phenomenon, as surface temperatures continue to rise, oceans will get warmer leading to larger storms, and summers will get hotter causing longer droughts and bigger wildfires. This increase in extreme storms used to be limited to the realm of science fiction. Unfortunately, now it's a reality. And now that we understand that our weather is changing, it is critical for people and communities to focus on resilience. Resilience calls for a strengthening of communities and systems to respond and adapt to this changing world. This could take the form of something large, like investing more time and money in emergency response systems so that no one is left stranded in the wake of a destructive wildfire. But it could also mean smaller actions, like working to supply solar panels to those who want them. Ultimately, when installed on the roof of a house, solar panels minimize the carbon footprint of that homeowner, decentralizes the energy grid, and in the case of an extreme weather event that knocks down power infrastructure, keeps the lights on. Another compelling way we might be able to build resilience is by reconsidering where and how we rebuild houses that are prone to natural disaster damage. The National Resources Defense Council points towards a flawed tendency for federal policies to encourage a destructive cycle that moves between flood damage, repairing that damage, only to have that house flooded again. The NRDC claims that from between 1978 to 2015, it cost FEMA over $5.5 billion to repair only 30,000 houses that had already been flooded multiple times. This cycle is mainly fueled by federal insurance for disaster-prone housing, which is essential for those who are unable to sell their houses in these frequently flooded areas. But at the same time, these kind of programs have assumed the risk of living in those areas, 
and allowed for increased development despite recent storms like Harvey, Florence, or Hurricane Michael, which have caused millions of dollars in damage. In order to mitigate the destruction of these natural events then, we need to shift away from this kind of reactive approach and toward a more proactive one that plans for the long term by discouraging building in disaster prone areas and finding a new path forward for current residents. So yes, extreme weather events like hurricanes will inevitably get worse due to climate change. And it's already happening with hurricanes like Harvey, Sandy, Maria, and Irma. We won't see earth-shattering storms like we did in the day after tomorrow. But these weather events will still upend millions of people's lives. Living with this new normal of harsher weather means both adapting to it and mitigating the destruction. Terrible storms, droughts, and fires will continue to happen. And it would be arrogant of us not to prepare in any way we can. Thanks for watching. Weather events caused by climate change are a pretty complicated topic, and I really just scratched the surface. So if you want to learn more, I put some resources down in the description below. Also, if you liked the video, please consider subscribing or supporting the channel financially on Patreon. Otherwise, I will see you next time.